at Century 21 Breeden Realtors and I'm here to read you one of my favorite books today that is actually from when I was a small child. Um, I'm a realtor here with Century 21 which means I sell houses and reading is very important to me because I find that the more that you read the easier it is to speak and I'm talking with people every day. Plus I have to go online and describe houses for people and things like that so I find that everything I do relates back to reading and it's one of my favorite pastimes when I need to rewind and relax. Um, and today I brought my dog, Fletcher, with me. He is my new puppy. And um, that's why I picked out the book I did uh, when Fletcher was hatched, how Fletcher was hatched. And from my childhood, because we named Fletcher after this. It's one of the, the things that I remembered was this favorite book as a child. So, how Fletcher was hatched. Alexandra sat in the sunlight watching a chick hatch from an egg. Peep! And it, out of its shell it came. Fletcher, she called to her dog. Look at this dear chick. It's so tiny. It's so yellow. And it's so fluffy. It's so stupid, growled Fletcher to himself. He gave Alexandra a hopeless look and walked to his water dish. It was empty. <sighs> Another thing, he hadn't had his ears scratched in days. No one wants a first-rate hound dog around here, he thought to himself. She's forgotten me. Fletcher raised his head and howled miserably. He was feeling left out. Quiet, noisy. The chicks are sleeping. Alexandra turned her back on Fletcher. With a wounded look, Fletcher shuffled mournfully away toward the park at the edge of town. At the far end of the park was a pond where Fletcher's faithful friends, Beaver and Otter, lived. Otter was splashing Beaver at the water's edge when Fletcher shuffled up. The animals weren't long in noticing Fletcher's sadness. Fletcher saw to that with a few deep moans and some very loud sniffles, so they, they couldn't miss it. Alarmed, they gathered close to hear his tale. She's forgotten me, said Fletcher. She loves chickens now. Cute, fluffy, peeping, stupid chickens. Beaver and Otter, who were wild free animals, didn't really understand Fletcher's deep attachment to his mistress, but they understood that Fletcher was terribly unhappy. I'm terribly unhappy, said Fletcher. Maybe if you were a fluffy and yellow, said the Otter doubtfully. Could you peep peep a little, asked Beaver. If you could only hatch once in a while, said Otter. That's it, cried Beaver, slapping his tail. We'll have you hatch. It will be a new beginning. Me? Hatch? yelped Fletcher. But Beaver and Otter paid little attention to Fletcher. They were soon in a warm discussion of how to make an egg large enough to hold a big brown spotted hound dog. With some misgivings, Fletcher promised to do his part and act like a chicken. Look at his ears flopping. All day, they built the egg around Fletcher. They worked in the sun with reeds, clay, and river grasses. Otter sometimes stopped to tickle Fletcher's nose with a cornflower when it itched, but Beaver, who was a master builder, worked steadily, plastering pink clay evenly over, a, over the network of reeds. With his friends working so tirelessly, Fletcher couldn't complain even when wet lumps of clay dropped on his head. At last, it was finished! Beaver had sm smoothed the clay over the surface with such artistry that there couldn't be little doubt that this great pink pearly object was indeed an egg. An egg that would have been a joy to any mother's bird heart. He speckled it brown in honor of Fletcher's own brown spots. Two small holes were left in the egg so that Fletcher could be fed and a, with a strawberry or two when he was hungry. Beaver, Otter, and Fletcher were so tired from the day's work. It had been a long day. Shadows grew deeper and lengthened into the blue of night. And when the pumpkin-colored moon appeared at the rib of the pond, Beaver and Otter, nestling close to their great egg, lay deep in sleep. Inside the egg, 
feeling very homesick, Fletcher wondered if Alexandra was thinking of him. Back in the farmhouse, Alexandra lay awake under her red quilt. Tears fell on her pillow. How could she sleep with Fletcher gone? Perhaps he would never return. The clock struck 12 before she finally went off to sleep. At last it was morning. At the pond, the white surface of the water was broken by jumping frogs and leaping minnows. Otter and Beaver awoke and ambled down to the water's edge for a quick dip and a breakfast. They didn't forget a few strawberries for Fletcher, who was discovering that inside of an egg is the most unsatisfactory place to yawn and stretch. Let's go, commanded Beaver. Now the animals started the last part of their plan. Very carefully, they pushed, shoved, and rolled the egg up the hill. They reached a large clump of grass by the path that led to Alexandra's school. Inside the egg, Fletcher felt a bit bruised and a little bit confused. The town began to wake up slowly and the sounds of traffic drove Beaver and Otter back to the pond and the tall grasses. They shouted, bye Fletcher, good luck, and remember, no barking, just peeping. Beep, growled Fletcher, and then he lay quiet in the egg. It was the custodian on the way to open the school who first discovered the amazing egg. He shouted to some nearby children, it's an egg, the biggest one in the world. Call the science teacher quick. Soon a crowd of children gathered about, their eyes just filled with wonder. Where's its mother, asked little Tommy. Its mother would be as large as that house, said round-eyed Gabby, shaking her blonde hair. Bigger, said Robert. The science teacher scurried up the crowd with his friend, Professor Schmitzer from the university. The crowd became larger and members of the school band on their way for an early practice gathered close. The science teacher stood up on a park bench and shouted, don't touch it. It looks like a flat billed prehistoric scratch a batch, a priceless find. A respectful hush fell on the crowd. Or perhaps it is the web-footed, pickle-faced dinoflyer, cried the professor from the university. Fletcher hustled in, uh, huddled inside the egg, quivering with excitement as he waited for Alexandra. And suddenly, he heard her name. The children were telling her about the egg. Fletcher now began to get ready for the big moment. But Alexandra, she was making funny noises. Alexandra was crying. She told them all that she didn't want to see a stupid old egg. She was looking for her lost Fletcher. In fact, the only thing in the world that she wanted right then was Fletcher. <gasps> then and there, Fletcher knew it was time to hatch. He pushed and he stretched and with a rising oh. howl, he fairly exploded out of the egg. The crowd screamed and moved back. Fletcher shook himself and mud flew. Feeling that something was expected of him, he turned to Alexandra and he croaked. How? Peep, he croaked. Laughing and crying, Alexandra hugged him. The two men of science looked at their shoes and they felt a little bit foolish. Strike up the band, said the principal, hoping that everyone had forgotten about his guess that the mother of the egg was a giant hen from Mars. The band played, hurrah for the red, white, and blue and the principal, feeling called upon to bring the occasion to a close, faced the audience. He wiped his face with his handkerchief, and he said, only in America, he announced with great feeling, could a hound dog hatch from an egg. This seemed to please everyone, and with much clapping and whistling, the crowd began to finally go away. Alexandra skipped along with Fletcher. Fletcher panted happily. Sometimes, sometimes Alexandra had to stop just to hug her dog. And Fletcher thought to himself, you don't have to hatch to be loved. You don't have to be yellow and you don't have to pee. You can be a great hound dog with big brown spots and still be the most important creature in a little girl's life. He gave himself a good shake and the last of the dried mud on his back went flying away. I hope you liked it as much as I did. Fletcher, come here, buddy. Come here. Fletcher and I hope you do lots of reading.